What's up guys, it's Alec Torelli and welcome back to the hand of the day. Today's hand comes from one of my readers, Philip, all the way over in Taiwan, who's part of the Taiwan Chinese Texas Hold'em Poker Club. And for all of you out there watching at the Poker Club in Taiwan, uh, Ni hao, uh, wo xiang chu dai Taiwan, ke For now, here is the hand of the day. So thank you guys for sending me this hand. I'm really excited to share with you awesome stuff. Uh, so this hand's played online and we're playing $1, $2, no limit hold'em. We're in the big blind. The hero's in the big blind here. And player five opens, uh, villain in the hand opens mid position to $4 with a min raise. Gets folded around to us in the big blind and we opt to call a min raise with a jack two suited. Now I'm totally fine with defending here. I'm gonna defend my big blind a lot. We are calling $2 into a pot of seven. So we're getting a great price. We close the action and we have a suited hand and we're in the big blind. So I'm totally fine with calling here and we go heads up to the flop. To the flop. Flop comes nine, three deuce rainbow. So we flop bottom pair and a backdoor flush draw. We check and our opponent checks behind. Now this is a little bit weird here. So automatically there's some sort of signals going off in my head. I'm thinking a few different things. One is I'm thinking that it's very likely that my opponent has a pretty good hand. And even though that's kind of ironic because of the fact that he checked, what you have to keep in mind is what would your opponent do if he had air? If my opponent has absolutely nothing on a 9-3 deuce board in position, heads up, when he's the raiser, he's always going to bet, right? What would you do? Just ask yourself what you would do in this spot to get a feel for how people are going to react. So I would always expect my opponent to bet with air because I'm always gonna bet with air because this is a great flop to bet against the calling range of the big blind. So if my opponent has something like Jack-10 suited, he's gonna bet this flop. So when he does check, I'm thinking that it's a little bit fishy, number one, and number two, that he probably has a hand with at least some showdown value. The most likely hand being a hand that's too strong, like too strong to bet but that doesn't really make sense because he doesn't get anything better than it to fold. So something like ace-queen is a perfect example. No better hands fold from our point of view. We're never going to fold a better hand than ace-queen, but at the same time, no worse hands really, really call. So something like that with these sort of middle of the range type of hands that he can have are the most likely. I think any hand like better than uh, a nine, like an over pair is always going to bet. And even, and maybe even some nines would, would bet here. But I think the most likely hand that he could have is something like two fives, two sixes, two sevens, two eights, maybe a weak nine, like nine, 10 suited, nine, eight suited, something like that, or ace high. Those are the most likely hands our opponent could have. Of course, he could have something like three nines and be trapping us here, which sucks, but that's very, very unlikely. It's important to keep in mind that just because your opponent checks doesn't mean he automatically has the nuts. He has a, a large range of hands, a small portion of which include the absolute nuts. So that's sort of what I'm thinking automatically on the flop when my opponent checks in position, and that's gonna play into how I'm going to make decisions later on in the hand. The turn comes an offsuit deuce. He checks behind, turn comes an offsuit deuce. We make essentially the nuts, right? This is an excellent card for us, super inconspicuous. It's very unlikely our opponent puts us on this hand, and excellent card, completely rainbow board. We go ahead and lead out 560 into a pot of 860, uh, like two thirds, three fourths size bet, which is totally fine here. I'm totally fine with leading here, um, especially with trips. We're hoping to get value from the hands that our opponent has. Remember, keep in mind, our opponent likely has something because he checked back the flop. And if you think about that entire range of hands that we put him on, on the flop, all those hands are gonna call, right? So any pair is gonna call, ace high is going to call, and that's pretty much all that he has. So all of those hands are gonna call the turn. I see no reason to check here. Um, so I would definitely bet the turn, um, also because most of the hands that he checked the flop with are going to check again on the turn, especially those ace high hands. So you get a lot more value by betting. I love the bet, well done, good sizing, good job. He calls, which we expect, and we go heads up to the river. The river comes in offsuit three, and here's where things get really interesting. The pot's about $20, and we're super deep stacked at this point. 
Now we opt to check here, which I don't really like, and here is why. Remember what we said about the range of hands that our opponent could have on the flop and on the turn? Well, nothing's really changed about that range from the flop check to the river. In other words, if you think about how our opponent's gonna play all of his range on the flop, he's going to call with all that range on the turn, and he still has the exact same hands on the river. So in other words, he could still have any nine, ace high, or some sort of weak pairs. Those are the hands that we expect him to have. Of course, maybe he could have nines full some small percentage of the time. But those are really the only hands that we expect our opponent to have in this spot. So against that range of hands, you gotta think, always ask yourself this one question, right? If you take nothing else away from this video or any of my strategy teachings in general, ask yourself this one question every time you're faced with a decision. How can I win more money in this hand? Or how can I lose the least amount of money in this hand? Well, in this case, you have the nuts, essentially, you have an excellent hand, so you're, the question you're asking yourself is how can I make more money? Well, think about how your opponent's gonna react with the different options that you have. Now, if you bet, your opponent is gonna likely call with all the hands that we said he can have, right? He's gonna call with ace high, because this is a great board for ace high. You could be bluffing, you could have ace high yourself. He's gonna call with any pair, because any pair is probably the best hand. It beats ace high, it beats your bluffs. But at the same time, you have to ask yourself, what is your opponent gonna do if you check? So we already decided if you bet, he's gonna call, you're gonna win whatever you bet, let's say $15, you're gonna win that a large, large portion of the time if you bet. If you check, you're trying to win more money by inducing a bet. But think about it. Your opponent has the hand range that we talked about, ace high and small pairs, weak pairs, maybe a nine at best or something like that. But he's unlikely to bet those hands on the river. He's probably just gonna check and hope to win at showdown. He's really unlikely he's gonna bet with ace high because it doesn't get called by anything worse. He doesn't get anything better to fold. And he might even check a nine just because it's, it's, it's unlikely he's gonna get called by a worse hand. It's also pretty unlikely he has a nine. So his most likely hand is like some weak pair, like five, six to sevens or ace high. And all those hands are gonna check the river. They're not going to bet. So you're not gonna win much more money by checking in the long run as opposed to betting. So I like a bet here on this river. I would bet $15. Maybe you could bet, maybe you can over bet if you, if you wanna get creative or tricky and, and try and represent a boat or air. Maybe you could do that. The point here is you should definitely be betting this river against all the range of hands your opponent could have. Now, as played, you check the river and surprisingly our opponent bets $15. So at this point, you have to discount some of the hands that he can have because he wouldn't bet those on the river. Some of the hands I would discount are something like maybe five, six to sevens. And maybe I would say he could have something like nines full, he could have a boat. He could possibly crazily have a three if he has like specifically ace three suited, which checked the flop. There's only two combinations of that hand. There's only two possibilities of ace three, super unlikely. Otherwise he has ace high, he's turning it into a bluff. Or he has something like a nine that he's going for value, hoping that you have ace high and that you call. So. The point here is that when you analyze the hands that he's betting the river with, it's it's some small percentage of the hands that he that he could have, but most importantly, your deuce, deuce is full, is likely ahead of that hand on the river. It's really likely that you have the best hand at this point, just because it's really unlikely that he would have checked the flop with any hand that is now better than your hand, right? It's really unlikely he has a three because he only raises preflop with ace three, and he also is unlikely to have that hand because he checked the flop and nines full are super unlikely. So at this point, I think he's going for some thin sort of value with like a nine or whatever. And I'm probably going to check raise here because I can have a three, I can have a deuce. I might be bluffing. It's kind of a weird spot. Maybe you're turning ace high into a bluff. You could theoretically be bluffing here. So I would check raise to something like $50 and go for value, right? Something like 40, $50. And I would go for value here with my deuce is full as played. In the long run, I prefer betting the river, but as played, I would check raise the river. I think there's enough hands that he calls you with that are worse, and let's face it, your raise looks really fishy on the river, right? The only hands that you're representing here are threes full and a deuce, and it's pretty unlikely you have those hands because you called in the big blind, and secondly, your opponent would expect you to bet the river because of all the reasons we just talked about. So if your opponent is thinking on the same level as us, he's not gonna expect you to go for a check raise on the river here, he's gonna expect you to bet. So that sort of makes it look like your hand is more like a bluff than it actually is. So I actually think you kind of got lucky here that your opponent ended up betting because now you have the opportunity to check raise and get really tricky and win a huge pot. 
So you decided to just check call, which is sort of frustrating because I feel like you really had a chance to win a huge pot here. And your opponent, which this is probably you know heart crushing, he turns over two aces. So at this point, your opponent, I feel like, is definitely going to call a check raise. He was really tricky with his aces. I wouldn't. I don't think any of us could expect him to have two aces here, simply because two aces almost always bets the flop. So really tricky play by your opponent. I feel like you missed some value, my man. I got to be honest with you. I'm trying to help you improve. I feel like you should have check raised this river here, and I think you would have got paid. So I hope you like this video. Uh, uh, Sai Gen to everybody in Taiwan. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Subscribe to my channel if you like this video, and I'll be putting out more awesome new content for you guys soon. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys next time on the hand of the day. Cheers.